So I would like to welcome everyone to our today's uh, sermon. And uh, I hope I'm going to be brief and to the point. But I'll really pray each and every one of us admits us, uh, meets us at our points of need. As we had seen in the program, our message for this Sabbath is lost in church. And uh, you'll allow me to pray, then we'll get down to the message. Dear Heavenly Master, we are once again humbled before your presence. Thank you because you love us so much. And thank you because you've allowed us to be called your children. As we get down to this message, this Sabbath, may you open our eyes that we may behold the wondrous things out of your law. And dear Lord, at the end of it all, may we all say that the Lord whom we were waiting to speak to us has already spoken to us. Guide us. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so God's children, we have come to a time in this world where we have more people on earth than ever before. And uh, I think it is approximately And because we have this population growing, uh, we have more churches, more church members, more preachers. But what really uh, troubles my heart is that we have more than ever before. More churches, more church members, more preachers, but still more wickedness than ever before. Uh, in the past, no one was nervous about death or insecurity. And, uh, but these days we are very insecure everywhere we are walking. We are even thinking that death is just next to us. So meaning we are not living in times that are safe. And therefore we are living in very perilous times. And friends, let me tell us this as Seventh-day Adventist that it is not enough to join a church and that there is no salvation in having your name in the role of the church. It's not enough to join a church and that there is no salvation in having your name in the role or in the register of the church. What should trouble you and me this day is that is my name written the records of heaven? And if my name is written there, how does my record stand before God? Does God look at me and say that that's my child? Does God look at me and say that's my son? Does he look at you and say that's my daughter? The question is, am I born again? Am I converted or am I just a nominal Christian? Do I just have my name in the church register? Or am I really converted? The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21. It's a verse we have read before, perhaps in our houses. The Bible says that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So friends, Jesus was a very straightforward man, I would say. 
and therefore he had no time to sugarcoat sin he had no time to compromise and therefore that's why he told them straightforward that as you are seeing all these people as you are seeing all these preachers not everyone that is calling my name lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven the bible continues to say that many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works let me pause at that point and say this that righteousness is right doing righteousness is right doing and we have to do something as we are calling the name of the lord and verses 22 says that many will say to me that is to him in that day that lord lord have we not prophesied in your name those are preachers who will stand before god who will stand before their master and ask him have we not prophesied in your name and then it says and in thy name have cast out devils those those friends are healers those who have the power to heal in that day will pose that question that have we not cast out devils in your name and then it says and in thy name done many wonderful works that is charity work the works of philanthropic guys that we have around didn't we preach in your name didn't we cast out devils in your name didn't we do wonderful works in your name my brothers and sisters this sabbath we need to know and understand one thing that we are not saved by our works but remember this our faith has to be accompanied by our works verses 23 and let me pause and say that those requesting to to see me i'm having a bit of challenge with power here but at the end of the session i'll unmute and you'll see me just bear with me for now verses 23 says and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity so in that day you see the bible tells me that all things were created through jesus christ and therefore christ knows us from the beginning but what astonishes me is that in that day he will profess unto them that i never knew you depart me uh, depart from me ye that work iniquity when you read through the book of isaiah chapter 59 i believe verse 1 and 2 it says that behold the lord's hand is not short and that it cannot save behold neither is his ear too heavy that it cannot hear and then verses 2 it says that but our iniquities have separated us from god if there is anything in this world that we own my brother and my sister it is our sins everything else belongs to god and therefore verses 23 says that he will profess he doesn't know us because we have worked iniquity it is because we are talking one thing and doing the other preaching in his name casting out devils in his name doing wonderful works in his name but in that day he will profess he doesn't know us let me tell you that it is not enough to preach 
And that's why it reaches a point, Paul says that woe unto me that I preach to others and I myself be cast away. So my friends, it is not enough to preach. It is not enough to join a church. It is not enough to get to the Sabbath school. It is not enough. And therefore he says, I never knew you. There's a time that is coming that Jesus will just look at us and say that I knew you were just a barren fig tree. He knew that he had planted us in this church, but we are just barren fig tree, a tree that has no fruits. Does not bring forth fruits that will be able to satisfy us. And let me pause and say this. You can't walk yourself into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, no one will be taught to heaven. In fact, the pen of inspiration tells us that heaven will be cheap enough if we obtain it through suffering. The road that we have chosen, my brothers and sisters, is not a road that is so easy full of misery. It is a path full of agony. It is a path that is full of disappointments. The book of Matthew still chapter seven, let me get back to verses 13 through 14, which says that enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their heart, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I'll repeat it now microscopically. Enter ye in at the straight gate, not straight of S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, but straight of S-T-R-A-I-T, which means that strict. It means strict or a difficult one. So when the Bible is saying that enter ye in at the straight gate, it simply means that gate is very strict. Thorough inspection. We have to be frisked so that we enter in there as a pure people. And most of us, we've come to a world where we need is religion. A religion where we can keep doing what we want. We want a church where we won't give up on anything. We want a church where we can't give up on drinking. We want a church where we can't give up on smoking. We want a church where we cannot give up our bad habits. But the Bible reminds me that anyone that needs to follow Jesus Christ must take up his cross, uh, his cross sorry, deny himself and follow him. And let me tell you, we want a political church. That is the church that we want. But let me say this. Our God is high. Our God is high and lifted. And even the smallest sin is offensive to him. I'll repeat that point. That our God is a high and lifted one. Inhabiteth eternity. But even the smallest sin is offensive to him. We live carelessly yet come to God with superb audacity. We come to him with big offerings. And let me tell you, as I'm giving this message, I'm also speaking and talking to myself that we are living carelessly in this world. We come to him with super confidence. We come to him thinking we can bribe God with our offerings. We think we can bribe God with our right doing. But let me tell you, the motive behind your giving is what matters to God. The motive behind your good singing is what matters to him. 
We want churches where things are so smooth. We want where we are not told the truth, but the Bible tells that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And therefore we have no need to sugarcoat sin, brothers and sisters. We just need to speak it as it is in Jesus. And that power that comes out from God will be able to convert us all. Today we even have homosexual churches. We have lesbian preachers and everyone that is talking of heaven is not going there. Not everyone that is talking of heaven is going there. There are those who are talking of heaven, but they know where they're headed to. Not everyone with his name on the church register will be there. Not everyone. Not everyone talking of heaven, my brothers and sisters. Not everyone talking of heaven is going there. Not everyone with his name on the church register will be there. It will be such a great loss. It will be a great loss. When you read through the book of uh, First Peter, chapter, chapter, one, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, that says that we are a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, the word peculiar means that we are extraordinary. We are a unique people. And therefore, for us to make it to heaven, we need to be extraordinarily holy. We need to be extraordinarily pure. And that's why Christ says in Revelation 3 verse 20 that, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And anyone that hears my voice will open and I will come in and sup with him. It will be such a happy moment if we allowed Christ to take reign of our lives. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And let me say that if God can't give us the power to stop smoking, then he better comes off the throne that he's sitting on. If God can't give, give us victory over sin, then he is not what he says he is. My brothers and sisters, let us be willing and obedient to be used by God. Let us be willing and obedient to the voice of God. We can serve God in different capacities. We can help people see Jesus from various points. You don't have to stand at the pulpit for you to preach. We can preach from various angles that and spiritual gifts that God has given us. You can win people to Christ through your smile. You can win people to Christ by your kindness. And therefore, the book of Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, another common verse, that come unto me, Ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is that sin that seems to burden you, that makes you think God cannot use you. But today his arms are so wide open, saying that come unto me, ye who are weary and heavy laden. If you are tired of that life, Christ is calling you today. Christ is calling you this Sabbath and is calling you that he may have a serious talk with you. He is a friend and is a God that we can commune with as friend communicates with friend. The Bible tells me that there is this brother, that there is this friend, sorry, that sticks closer than a brother. That is Jesus Christ. You can tell him anything and you'll be sure not to get it from another person because he's confidential and he is trustworthy. There's a songwriter that tells me that he walks with you, talks with you, and he tells you that you are his own. 
he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. You are a God's child, my brother and my sister. Down, be sure that God is in control. The same place Jesus was, uh, the same place God was when his son Jesus Christ was being crucified. It is the same place God is when you go through suffering. And when I read through the Bible, the book of, uh, I learned that God can't put more on you that you can't carry. He can't give you a burden that he knows you can't carry through. It is the same case with, he allowed the devil to tempt Job. He allowed all that overwhelming disappointments to come to Job because he knew Job would be able to overcome. Second Peter chapter two, verses nine says, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust into the day of judgment to be punished. I'm interested in the first portion of it that the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of the temptations. He knows that he knows our strength and he knows our weaknesses. And therefore, anything that comes to you, be sure God knows that you are able to overcome it. There is power in the blood. There is wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. Allow me get there. Luke, chapter 6. The verse is 46. My Bible says, 46, reading King James Version. And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? It is a question that why should you call me your master when you can't obey my commands? Why should you call me your God if you can't do what I command you to do? So God has given us various orders through his word. But my brothers and sisters, is he our God if we can't heed to what he is telling us to do? You see, those people that we see that they, not, uh, they do not know God, they have a right. Those people that know you as a Christian, they have a right to see a difference in you. They have the right. They are drunkards. They have the right to see an upright man. If they are prostitutes, they need to see a difference in you. The devil, I always tell my friends that the devil will, would not mind if he would give us 99% of truth and just mingle it with 1% of error. Uh, of error. And to me, that is, is equals to 100% error. 99% truth. 1% error is equals to 100% error. The devil can decide to give you a grape juice, but he needs its poison. That is equal to damnation. And we need not to be spiritually indolent. We have to grow. When we began following the steps of Jesus Christ, we were spiritual babes. But as long as we have grown with him, we need to grow and become mature. People who can withstand strong meat, people who can face the truth as it is in the word of God. 
God can keep you if you want to keep yourself. God can keep you if you want to keep yourself. The book of Titus, chapter 2, I'll read verse 11. Says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. As we tell the world that we've been saved by grace, as we boast to the world that yes, we have been saved by this grace. Let us know that the grace of God, yes, brings salvation and it has appeared to all men. But this grace should teach us denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. It should teach us to live soberly. This grace should teach us to live, uh, to live righteously. This grace should teach us to live godly. The Bible says, in this present world. It is in this present world. And therefore, we need not to sugarcoat the devil. If the devil is bad, then he is bad. If the devil, is his actions are ugly, then they are ugly. At no point will the devil be a good man. You see, this reminds me the time of Jesus that uh, Nathaniel asked a question that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I will tend to think that perhaps Nazareth was a rotten city, but Jesus grew up pure in that field. Noah lived a righteous man in his generation. Lot lived a righteous man in his uh, generation. And therefore, with the power of God, you can live right in Washington, D.C. You can live right in Kenya, you can live right in Arizona. And because Jude 24 tells that it is now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. I believe when God will come, there are God's children that will be found in those cities that we think they are filthy. So you don't have to be in some bush for you to inherit the kingdom of God. Where you are, you need to be the light of the world. Our God is able to make that right. He can change you and me to be a better person. We can all quit our bad behaviors and we are able to, con uh, to, to, to overcome. All we need is to just surrender. The book of James chapter four, James chapter four, verses seven, I'll have to get there quickly. James chapter 4. And the verse is 7. The Bible says that resist the devil and he. It says submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you know what? Instead of running away from the devil, most of us, we are crawling away from the devil, thinking that he will catch up with us and take us back to our filthy ways. The Bible says, resist from the devil and he will flee from you. But all, almost all of us, we crawl away from him and some even run towards him. My friends, we need to put away evil. We need to strive to be there. 
we need to stand strong against the powers of the devil. We need and we must be born again. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, don't mistake me. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, he never told Nicodemus that you must join a church. He told him, you must be born again. For when we are born again, we follow the truth. Mm. And therefore, God is in the business of making us new. God is in the business of giving us a new birth. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says that a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 15 verses 8, the Bible says that we, uh, sorry, let me, let, me, let me get it clearly, uh, 15 verses 8, that these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I remember somewhere else the Bible says that my sheep knows my voice and follow me. We need to get that distinctive voice of God and follow him. And let me tell us today, this Sabbath, that it's somebody listening to me today here and they are going to heaven. There is a person who is listening to this message and is going to heaven. We got to pray without ceasing. You see, in this world, show me a backslider and I will show you someone who does not pray. Show me someone stumbling and I will show you someone who does not pray. I know the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak. And let me tell you, most of us doesn't know the power of prayer because we don't pray. We do not understand the power of prayer because we do not pray. Prayer has divided the sea and folks have walked through it. Prayer has made water to come out of a dry rock. Prayer has shut the lion's jaws from devouring God's children. Prayer has stopped the sun and God had revealed himself to Joshua. Prayer has opened the prison gates. Prayer has conquered demons. And let me tell you, even prayers have converted atheists. Prayers have healed the sick. And prayers delivered Jonah from the well. The Bible tells us that ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and that door will be opened unto you. You shall be delivered, my brother. You shall be delivered, my sister. All we need is to be set free. And there is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for our God. The book of Philippians chapter, chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1. Says, yes, uh, verse six, right? Being yes, confident but... of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. That he who has begun a good, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will mm. perform it until the day. Of Jesus Christ. What a promise that we get from the word of God. And therefore we need to be confident. That he who began the work of salvation. For the human race. He who began this work. In you will perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Do what you know. 
my brother and my sister. Walk in the light that you have received. We serve a God who can deliver. We serve a God who can help us overcome. Let us not be like people like Judas, who were with Jesus for all those years. Yet at the end of it all, they, he betrayed Jesus. We have seen people like Saul being converted. A person who was in the church but never knew who Jesus was. And that's why my message was lost in church. Judas was walked with the master, walked with the truth, who is Jesus himself, but he never learned with the truth. Saul was in the very church that was preaching God, but he never knew who Jesus was. And therefore, my brother and my sister, let us be very careful lest we be in the light but we be cast away the book of jeremiah chapter 6 verses 16 jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 the bible says that thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. What a painful ending that God is giving us the right path, is giving us a second chance that we get back to our good old ways. But what we say is that we will not walk therein. Our key text was from the book of Matthew, uh, John 17, verse 3. It is one of my best verses and our memory texts. That, and this is life eternal. Mm that they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. May God help us that we may know the one only true God. May God help us that we may be able to understand his son, Jesus Christ, whom he did send to die for our sins. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.